family friend goes way, way back for us, the, the Hamptons family. I, um, Pat doesn't remember this, but I remember that the Hamptons family took care of uh, Pat and my mom back uh, in 1965. Uh, and uh, Bush was much younger than that. And so was I. <laughs> and Pat was really young. But uh, anyway, uh, Butch would like to share a little bit with us, and then I'm going to share for a few moments uh, for the commitment to Okay. Um, I've got a little story that I'd like to let you uh, listen to. Uh, growing up, born and raised in Brisket, Arizona, my dad came here after the war, went to Nancy, France, and he worked in the hospitals over there and came back decided he wanted to get into this business and uh, do what uh, he did during his lifetime. So he was Digger 1. Uh, I ended up being Digger 2, thanks to all my wonderful friends. Uh, anyway, when my dad started off in the industry, he, he really liked cars a lot. I mean, he started off with some of the most amazing vehicles. But he never had the ability to buy a car for himself. I mean, he was just working all the time. But, he was investing in himself and investing in this business. And uh, so as I grew up, you know, I watched him work, I watched him do, and he was very, very good at what he did. Uh, we were running ambulances and all kinds of stuff at that time. So uh, anyway, once he got the, the, the wherewithal to go out and get his own car, uh, he, and, he and Marlon were good friends. So he went down to Marlon. He said, Marlon, I want to buy a car. And, it, and it's got to be able to transport people in it laying down. <laughs> and uh, but it's not a really special car, and uh, so they sat down over probably a little toddy or something, and they specked out a Pontiac Bonneville station wagon with a racing motor. <laughs> and uh, it took about six months to build this car and, and have it shipped to Prescott, Arizona. And uh, it, it was an amazing vehicle. It, it really was. I mean, it was just specked from the hubcaps to the to the top. It was, all exactly what my dad wanted. And uh, I'd get it on the weekends. Uh, my dad would go out the racetrack and provide ambulance service to the local jockeys and stuff. But I'd go down and get the spare keys and I'd take it out the drag strip. <laughs> and uh, did a lot of racing with it on the weekends. And he, he figured it out because he'd come back and the car was empty. <laughs> and, and, and I'd take it out and run the half a tank through it in about a quarter of a mile. Because it had three, two carburetors and all this stuff. Anyway, it, it was uh, the day that my dad received that car from Marlon. I don't know that I've seen two men smile as much as they did. I mean, it was the joy of Marlon fulfilling uh, an obligation type of thing to my dad and, and, and really doing it the right way to, to, you know, listening to a person and actually being able to buy a car to your design back then. And this was back in 65. You could do that. You can't do that today. But back in those days, you could actually sit down with, with somebody like Marlon, and they actually went through the book from one end to the other and just absolutely built this car. And it was a tremendous vehicle. And the, the joy and pleasure that, that he imparted on my father was just, just tremendous. I mean, my dad had never been happier in his life when he actually was in the car. It meant a lot to him, and, and I saw him. I just wanted to let you know that's a big guy that Marlon was. He, he listened and he did. And it made a big difference. Did it in my life and my heart. So thank you. <laughs> I know it scares everybody when they see me have notes. <laughs> but I, I said I would be short, which is not easy for me. For those who don't know, I passed her for 15 years. Uh, as well as being a fireman and other mm -hmm. things I've done. Um, you know, as we come together today, and as we've got, there are many occasions in life that draw people together, but few occasions really affect us more than coming together to share our tears at the loss of our loved ones. We certainly grieve. There's a time for grieving, and, and I've got a few verses there. But, but we also find comfort, not just in one another, but we find comfort in the memories that we have of those that we've lost. I have so many memories, you know, Rin covered memories this morning and Pat and, and the memories. I, I, you know, simple things now come back, you know, when I was a teenager and just getting to go with dad and go have coffee in the mornings when I was off 
on summer break mm. and, and get to feel kind of grown up to go to the coffee touch yeah. with the guys in the morning. And, and uh, interestingly enough, you know, towards the end, the last few years, what was it? I'd meet dad at McDonald's over for coffee and, <laughs> and, over and, and do it. So, you know, those are the, those are memories and, and all of the other uh, memories that we all have of, of dad and of Tana and the memories of them. And as I, I as Pat and I went down to Mexico here a few weeks ago and I stepped into the house, everything there, it's the memories of them. It's, it's, that's what I remember. That house is without them. It's, it's, just a, house. just a house to some extent it's just a house it's a beautiful house but it's just a house they made it and they made our lives so much better they brought such joy into our lives and, and as you saw from the number of people this morning that was just such a that's a small amount a, a small number of the people that were influenced or, or had that, that had somehow been influenced by their lives we touched so many lives while we are grieving, and there's there's a certain amount of grief today as we as we think about the loss, we 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 have to realize and we come to the realization, and the scriptures give us some some realization that that God has a time for all things. The birds made a song very popular a number of years ago. In Ecclesi but it comes from Ecclesiastes chapter three. It says, To everything there's a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born time to die, time to plant, a time to pluck what's planted, time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. And it goes on from there. But, but as we come together, we're taking some time today to mourn, but we're also taking some time today to laugh. We're taking some time to, 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 to weep, but yet I won't say we're going to dance. I don't think they want us to dance here at the cemetery. But inside, you can't help but have that joy that, that uh, of seeing what an influence, when we look at the community around us, the influence that they have on this community. We can also take comfort in God's word, which brings us comfort in this time. In his Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew, Jesus said, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. While we mourn, yet there's comfort for us. In Second Corinthians, this is actually, Mike said this this morning, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our tribulation. He comforts us in our time of mourning. He also, Mike, this morning, read from, from John, and let not your heart be troubled. troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. But a little further down in, in John 14, where that passage comes from, it says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Not as the world give I, or not as the world gives, do I give you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Again, I said I'd keep it short, but it's this time, and then why we're here today, is to commit the earthly remains of dad, Tana, to their final resting place, their, their earthly remains. But with that, we, we know that again, also scriptural, also falls into God's plan. In Genesis 2, 7, it says that the Lord God formed man from the dust of the earth and breathed, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. But later when they had failed in the garden, God also made another promise. He said, In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you are taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. Ecclesiastes again, Solomon says, Remember your Creator before the silver cord is loose, or the golden bowl is broken, or the pitcher, sh or the pitcher shattered at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the well. Then the dust will return to the earth as it was, and the spirit will return to God who gave it. There is a prayer in the common or the book of common prayer, and many times you hear this at, at services and, and uh, committal services frequently, and I'm going to read this. Uh, it was published in 1549, but still prevalent today. It says, For inasmuch as it is pleased 
Almighty God of his great mercy to take into himself the soul of our dear brother and sister here departed. We therefore commit their bodies to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. So change our vile body that it may be like unto his glorious body according to the mighty working whereby he is able to subdue all things to himself. As that prayer says and as the scriptures also bear out, the bodies that we are in, our earthly bodies here are just a temporary dwelling. Second Corinthians Corinthians Second Corinthians, I can't say it. In the Bible, it says, For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desire to be clothed with our habitation which is from heaven. And a little later, Paul says, in that, you know, a few verses later, he says, so we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So we look forward to that day through faith in Jesus Christ that we reunited again with Dad, Tana, with many others in our families that have have gone on before and for some of us who are getting out there more and more years that day the way baby reunited may not be that far away but yet the memories that we have are not going to fade you know I didn't like say I, I didn't have a lot of stories to bring because I knew we had a timeline here but but I just look back and I think every once in a while the things I, I have to tell because there was the airplane story and when dad put it down, I remember one time flying with dad, coming back from, uh, I don't know, we were flying from Flagstaff or Sedona, uh, and, and we were in the, in the airplane, and we hit a storm coming over Mingus, and it was really, really, really storming, and the airport was socked in, and, and the crosswinds were just tremendous, and dad is never, ever one to be rough with. That was one thing about him. He just never panicked. He never panicked. <coughs> and I looked over at him because he was flying and I was on the right seat. And I said, Dad, are we going to make it? For the first time I ever said it, he looked at me and in all serious, he said, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, that's not as comforting as I'd like it to be. <laughs> and we came down and the crosswinds, I didn't think we were going to make it. He managed to, to carry that wind and get us down on that runway. He was an amazing pilot. Uh, when he put that plane down out there, they didn't tell the rest of that story. And, I, and please, give me a minute. Just when they put the plane down in the dry lake bed outside of Flagstaff, they came out there, and the the company Mooney was a brand new airplane. It had been one used for certification of a 231 Mooney turbo. Mooney came out, and the engine company came out and said, "Yeah, it threw a rod. It had thrown a rod up, just a bad engine." The decision was made to put a new engine in it. And, uh, and Dad said, whatever you want to do. And then they said, it came down to who was going to fly it out of there. <laughs> and the company said, you have more hours in this plane than anybody we have. <laughs> and he said, well, I don't want to fly it out of here. <laughs> and they said, well, you're the best chance of getting it up and out of there and he said well as long as you cover everything if anything goes wrong and so he did and he had a, a good friend of his a retired TWA pilot who was sitting in the right seat and they took off to go across the dry leak bed they got about 30 feet up in the air and it paid off and went back in and this time it totally the airplane and they walked away again <laughs> they investigated and they, what they figured out was that the, the pilot, the, the retired TWA pilot, just the way he was sitting in the, in the, the right side, the, where the flap lever was, bouncing across that field trying to miss the stumps, 
he apparently had hit the flap lever and brought the flaps up on that. And you fly an airplane and you were trying to get out of where he was trying to get, you needed full flaps. And the flaps were coming up as they were going across and it got up about 30 feet and had no lift. And he went back in and told it and walked away again and wrenched right. He didn't fly after that. And he, just, he, he decided to give up on, on planes, I think, at that point in time. And I don't blame him. Twice he walked away. God preserved him twice from from that aircraft into it. Uh, but uh, anyway, well, you know what? I'm sure in, in their stories and, and, Tana, and just all the things that, you know, as we look this morning, I, I, I once again, their time in Mexico was so so important to them and and dad treasured it the, some of the trips the pictures you saw were some of their trips that they went on uh, he truly truly uh, he and Tana I think truly enjoyed one another and the time that they had that 20 years that they had uh, they packed a lot of life in the 20 years together and and they really really had, I think, some, some real fun times in there. Uh, I don't know why being mayor was fun to him and to them to do that. I, I've been around, I, I spent many years in politics and I'm glad to be uh, away from that. Well, I was fire chief, so I wasn't, but politics from the bad side. Uh, and anyway, but again, I would like if everybody bring your, your bulletins with you. Can we recite the 23rd song together? Would that be all right? And then we'll on the I'll be done. Is there anything else that uh, we need to do? Okay. Anyone else? That, okay. Well, if that's all right, let's just uh, let's just do the Lord's Prayer and uh, the Lord's Prayer. Uh, I'm sorry, the 23rd song. 23rd song, not the Lord's Prayer. The 23rd song. If do you have that, does everybody bring a copy? Yeah. The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's bow our heads. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the lives that Dad and Tana lived. For the joy they brought into our lives. For the, for the comfort and peace they brought to us so many times when we were in times of trouble. And now, Lord, we pray that you would bring us that peace and comfort. As we go through this time of saying goodbye. Looking forward to that day when we'll be reunited with them again. Lord, remembering the good days and, and even the tough times that we that we suffered through with them. And Lord, in knowing, Lord, that, that you gave them time to, to enjoy one another, time to enjoy your creation, to travel, to do the things that they were able to do, to enjoy the ocean, the things that they enjoyed at, at their place in Mexico. Lord, we, we just thank you. I thank you, Lord, for for bringing all those together, our family, our friends, Lord, as we as we take this time to say farewell to them, but, but with anticipation and joyous anticipation of looking forward to that day when we are able to see and be with them again, placing our faith and trust in you, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Everyone said, Amen. Amen.